what's up guys maxim here back again with another academy fem tutorial and this tutorial is going to just be discussing sidechaining in ableton so what sidechain essentially is and the main reason why it's also used is you're basically using a compressor or i mean of course there are different tools available to sidechain with but in this case we're using the ableton compressor to let a signal duck when the initial signal that's put into the compressor is playing. So what this gives you is a quick and easy tool to not only create a certain vibe or groove, but also to help make sure that elements don't clash together as much. So I remember when I started out with basic production like way, way ago, I always, I, I was basically just punching myself because I didn't know why my tracks just didn't sound, I need to say I was making, I think like progressive house around that time or something. And um, I, I could just never figure out why the producers at that time were so much better with creating a groove. Like for some reason their synths and basses were just kind of, working with the kick perfectly and then i learned about sidechain and that just completely changed my life so we're gonna go ahead and just see how simple it really is to apply this in ableton and why i love doing it with a compressor as well uh, despite all the other options available like elvo tool and kickstart and whatnot and volume shaper for example which are great tools in their own right and have different appliances but just for day-to-day -day overall necessity of sidechaining certain instruments especially when you're not working with the standard four and floor kick this is definitely my favorite tool so let's go ahead and look at the overview of this so when let's actually go ahead and just load up a compressor and then i'll go side by side everything so you load up your standard compressor in ableton you deactivate the makeup we don't want that that's just going to be weird we're going to go ahead and press this little icon here. We see sidechain, press that. And this is how it works for any other compressor out there as well, um, or any other feature which offers sidechain, is that you just have to activate the sidechain and route that into there, basically. And then you go ahead and select your kick. So in this case, that's name kick two. I recommend if you have a lot of tra tracks to make sure that you name and kick otherwise you might uh, choose the wrong instrument um, this basically right here I never really use these knobs but this is of course basically determines how loud that kick signal or whatever signal you have is coming into this compressor and this is basically the, the mix so in a sense it's basically the same thing this is just going to decide how how much of that kick is basically going to be used to trigger the sidechain. And then you also have an EQ function here, which I've talked about, I think, in an older video. And what this basically gives you is the ability to decide where you want that sidechain to take place. And this is less, however, iterative of the sidechain, but more of the compressor itself. So you can even use this on your regular EQ just as is to determine where you want to say I'm gonna have a high pass filter right here so below 200 Hertz it won't pick up the signal to compress from that and most of the time or actually all the time I don't use that for side chaining but it's something interesting if you're moving out of you know the very cookie cutter types of side chain you know if you want to work with side chaining say different instruments to a vocal to make sure that the vocal cuts through all the time and is constant then this might be something a bit more interesting or if you have a track or stem where there's a lot more going on this might be interesting too but essentially yeah this is all you need just activate side chain select your kick and then what i would recommend for you to do is i used to always set my ratios as i felt like it sounded good but I realized with sidechain, honestly, just go ahead and set the ratio to infinite because it's just going to make everything a bit more consistent in terms of your sidechain. So if you have a synth stack, for example, or if you have 
different kinds of basses or instruments that you want to sidechain, now it's once you've also set up your different settings towards this kick drum, it's a lot easier to just go ahead and copy that onto different channels. So that being said, let's go ahead and look into the other controls that we have going on here. So you have an attack. I personally don't like having a really, really fast attack because, and I know that you can take different steps to go past what I'll mention in a second, but I personally just don't. I, I like giving my compressor a bit of a, you know, second here, not even a millisecond, something around that range to basically before it starts actually side chaining. That usually works better for me. Um, and in the music I work in, or even EDM, I'd say, a lot of times that'll kind of let the uh, let, let the transient kind of pass. And uh, th again, this is up to you, really. It, it doesn't. It's not. It's not going to make a huge difference either way. But if you're really particular, you can go ahead and just throw that down here. Even go ahead and activate the uh, lookout if we're going. To, I, I also I should mention that I prefer using this view here to see what the sidechain is doing. And you can even go ahead and activate the look ahead because what's faster than the fastest attack on the compressor? It's a compressor that knows what's coming. So you can go ahead and activate that too. But again, that's nothing that I really need in my life. So we're just going to go ahead and set that to something like here, making sure that there's no click or anything like that. And then the release essentially just decides how long that compression or that sidechain for that matter is going to stay around until the sound triggers again. So let's actually go ahead and uh, look at a visual example of that. And I've already got everything set up here, so let's go ahead and just go back to that and take a look and listen to what happens when I throw the release up a bit more. So I, as I said, I like using this to see what's going on here specifically. <laughs> So as you can see, the way this works is the more I bring this release up, the less and less it's actually going to reset to its original volume. And essentially, you're just basically taking down the whole volume of the thing and not really using the sidechain properly. So you want to keep this release fairly fast. Sometimes even if you have a very long kick drum, I'd recommend to switch that out to a very short one and just use that as a trigger for all your sidechains because you can always set the release, but you can't change the length of the kick drum unless you do, obviously, but you can't in the compressor. So as you could see, even if I have a very fast release, it's still going to sidechain to the kick drum exactly. And sometimes, you know, if you have a longer kick drum, you might just want to sidechain the a bit of it and still let the sound come up afterwards a lot faster and you know it's always nice to really have full control and dialing in things feel wise with the release than it is to have to work around uh, a kick drum and i decided that uh, i feel like around here is really where it sounds best and then you can also play around the knee all this really is gonna do it's a very subtle thing but it's basically just going to at least let me describe this in terms of things that you'll probably hear when you increase the knee or decrease it. The more you increase the knee, the sharper I feel like the sidechain becomes. And the more that you decrease the knee, I feel like the more it kind of softens out a bit. Uh, in at, le at least to my ears with the the way the signal works. But this is so subtle, again, it doesn't really matter that much. If you're in solo, you might hear this uh but really it's not going to make a huge difference in the greater scheme of things but sidechain does sidechain does make a huge difference in the greater scheme of things so let's go ahead and just ref uh just just listen to this track with sidechain and without and the reason why i actually added sidechain on here because i just felt like the bass was clashing way too much with the kick so let's go ahead and listen to that <laughs> So 
So I just felt like that is really nicely helping the groove kind of come alive and making that kick drum be able to just really kick through properly and that the bass isn't really playing above the kick drum weirdly. Um, again, you in this case, you know, you wouldn't necessarily have to, but I still preferred it. I thought it really helped the kick drum breathe and just created more groove. And also moving a lot of these things out of the way aren't just an artistic thing, but also a mixing thing, of course, because this will, for one, of course, let your kick drums or whatever instruments you're sidechaining breathe more in the context of the whole track. And this is can also affect, of course, the way your compressors react on the mix bus or how much EQing you're going to have to do. So sometimes sidechaining can fix a, a lot of just EQing, just simple things of volume. I actually think that uh, the most you can do with just volume is the best ways to go in most cases. But that's a story for a different time. I hope you guys learned something from this video, mainly how to sidechain. Thank <laughs> you.